Welcome to the best kept secret in all of Salem. Today we're exploring the neighborhood of Fairview nestled in Southeast Salem. The Fairview neighborhood is truly a hidden gem of Salem that had houses starting to pop up in 2016. Now as phase five kicks off of this new development, we are seeing Legacy Heights and Pringle Creek connect to the larger Fairview neighborhood. Just imagine living in a house ranging from 1500 square feet and it's a cozy little cottage all the way up to houses that are over 3,000 square feet. All of these homes come with high-end finishes, but more importantly, they blend the craftsman style of the Pacific Northwest with modern design touches and features. I'm Claire Diod, a local real estate agent who focuses on helping buyers relocate to Salem. If you're moving to Salem, book a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me so that we can chat about the details. All right, let's talk about the pros and cons of living in Fairview. The first con on our list is that this is a fairly expensive neighborhood to get into if we compare it against the average neighborhood in Salem. So right now the average neighbor or the average house in Salem is selling for $430,000. Here in the Fairview neighborhood, you should expect to pay over $500,000 to get into this community. Now, at $500,000, you are going to be finding a smaller, more petite, cozy cottage, but just be prepared to spend a little bit more to get into this neighborhood. And I, by the end of this video, I think you're gonna understand why it's more expensive than the average neighborhood in Salem. I think it's well worth it, but you'll have to decide for yourself at the end. The next con to the Fairview neighborhood is that this is a newer community. So like I said, it started uh, construction in 2016, but they are currently rolling out phase five. That means that you are going to be living next to an active construction zone. So if you have any sensitivity to noise or you just don't like the idea of living next to a construction zone, this might not be the right neighborhood for you. This entire area, which is the larger Fairview complex and subdivision and neighborhood, it is expanding rapidly. So I expect for the near future at least, there's still gonna be construction going on here. The next con on our list is that you are gonna to have to contend with the sounds of new construction, but you're also going to need to contend with the sounds of the Salem Airport, which does have commercial and private flights, but you're also gonna to have to contend with the sounds of the train that pass through a section of this larger neighborhood, which is called Morningside. So again, if you have any sense sensitivity to noise, you don't like the idea of hearing airplanes, construction zone noises, or the train, this really isn't the right neighborhood for you. The next con on our list is for all of my fur baby parents out there. This neighborhood tends to have smaller backyards. Some of the houses do have generous sized backyards, great for dogs, just going outside and going potty, but for the most part, the way that this neighborhood is constructed, not all of the houses have a backyard that's conducive for doggies. The next con on our list is that these houses are fairly close together. So if you are wanting privacy and a little bit of a buffer zone between you and your neighbor, it's going to be a challenge to find that here. The houses are constructed close together with those smaller backyards. The next con on our list is that this has a hilly section. So overall, this neighborhood isn't too hilly, but there are parts of it that are certainly on a hill. Case in point, this house right here. I mean, you can kind of see the way that this house is constructed. It is on a hill. So the garage would be in the back there, but it is important to know if you do not like hills like me, you might not like every house in this neighborhood. And let's turn around to flip it this way so you can see this hill over here. It slopes down and then the houses over there, they are built on uh, kind of a hillside overlooking the middle school down there. The next con on our list is that this is a small community. And while that's good for building connection and developing you know, relationships with your neighbors, there are just about 60 homes in the Fairview neighborhood at the time that I filmed this video. So that means it's going to be a challenge to actually find a house that pops on the market that fits your 
your needs and your preferences. So if you like this neighborhood, make sure that you have a little bit of time on your side because it might take a while to get into this neighborhood. The next con on our list is that this is an HOA community. The dues currently are under $100 per month, but if you don't like the idea of somebody else regulating the rules and regulations and covenants and restrictions of your community, this probably won't be the right place for you. But if you like the idea of an HOA and having some form of conformity within the neighborhood aesthetics wise, then this will be a great space for you. If you're finding value in this video so far, give it a thumbs up and go down to the comments and tell me if you've ever heard of this neighborhood before. I've just finished talking about the cons of living in Fairview. So let's talk about some of the pros of living in this community. The first on our list is that although the backyards aren't super spacious on many of these homes, there is ample opportunity and areas to walk your fur baby. So Fairview, the entire complex here, they are developing it currently, but in that process, there are a lot of empty vacant fields that in the future will be developed, but currently they just stand as a really nice place to walk your dog. So there's a lot of areas that you can walk outside of the community with your fur baby. You're also gonna notice that a lot of people in this community have dogs. So your fur babies are going to be very happy and have friends within this community. The next pro on our list is that this is a community that is newer and new. So the houses here started popping up in 2016, but as you can see here, phase five is rolling out. If you want more information about the timelines on phase five, you can reach out to me, but they are actively constructing homes. So if you want a brand new construction home, you will be able to get it in this community in the near future. If you like the idea of a newer construction home, great because these houses started development in 2016 and so all of these houses they are newer under 10 years old the next pro on our list is that some of these houses allow for dual living dual living is going to be great for anyone who needs multi-generational living or you just want to have a home office or an apartment to rent out there are a handful of homes in this community that have that dual living option if that is a top priority for you just know that those homes are going to be over the seven hundred thousand dollar mark and it's not like every house in this community is dual living so it's going to be a very very specific house that can help facilitate that. The next pro on our list is that the architecture of this community is phenomenal and amazing. So one of the key characteristics of this community is a blend of Pacific Northwest craftsman vibes with modern take. So every house here, let me just back up and go over this little walking bridge. Every house in this community has a front porch, which I know can seem kind of strange, like who the hell cares about a front porch? But the whole purpose of this community is to facilitate, well, community. <laughs> and so you have these houses with these front porches and you have the garages in the back. I mean, these houses are just quintessential Pacific Northwest vibes. And that's really what this community is known for, is replicating four square architecture design, craftsman design, but really putting a modern twist on it. And of course, front porches. The next pro on our list is that this community is going to have a lot of amenities when it's finished. So again, it's still being produced and built right now, but the plans are that there are gonna be pocket parks, there's gonna be a village farm, there's gonna be an amphitheater, there's currently an observatory, and so there are a lot of features within this um, community that will facilitate very pedestrian-friendly areas, and it's the intention is that it feels like a little mini village for people, that you, know, you don't have to leave the community to get all of your needs met. So that's a new concept here in Salem, and I think that this community here at Fairview is doing Doing a great job making that happen. The next pro on our list is that this community is so stinking convenient to things like downtown Salem, grocery shopping, Interstate 5, and just anywhere else you need to go, it is gonna be about 12 minutes away for you. So that's a huge highlight of the Fairview neighborhood, which sits in the larger Morningside neighborhood. And Morningside is known for its convenience, but this neighborhood in particular, is one that is just positioned so well to I-5 downtown 
everything that you could need. If you're liking the sound of the Fairview community, definitely schedule that one-on-one -on -one consultation with me so that we can chat all about the details, especially if you're interested in the new phase five development that's rolling out soon. My YouTube clients who focus their search efforts in this community tend to have a few things in common. The first being that their budget is over $600,000. The second thing is that they love, love, love the architecture styles within this community because it's very reminiscent of the Portland Pacific Northwest vibe. And the third thing that they all have in common is that while they love that architecture and that Pacific Northwest quintessential craftsman architecture, they don't want to be living in a house that's a hundred years old, which is typically where you find craftsman style houses. They tend to be older. But in this community, you get a new version of the craftsman style house which is a huge highlight for all of my clients who focus their search efforts here. All right, let's go jump online and check out some recently sold homes in the Fairview community. Howdy friends, we are on the interwebs together. This square here is the Fairview edition, which is the community that I was walking around and that I was talking about. And if we zoom out right here for your context pleasure, this is going to be Pringle Creek, which is a very similar community. I feel like Pringle Creek is kind of like the younger sibling of the Fairview edition. And then the latest edition, phase five, that is currently under construction, is this area right here. And so it's connecting Pringle Creek, Legacy Heights, and then the uh, Fairview community through this area here. So if you are looking for new construction, once this phase five rolls out, you can expect it to be right there. All right, let me zoom out just a little bit more so you can see where downtown is. Let's get out a little bit more, there we go. So here's the Fairview edition. Here is downtown Salem. And then we have Interstate 5 right here. The airport that I was talking about is located right here. And then ever so faintly, there's like that little faint gray line. That is the train that I was talking to you about. All right, let's go investigate some of these houses. So I'm looking at the past year of sold properties in Fairview Edition, AKA this squared area. You guys, we only have six houses that have sold in the past year. So that averages out to be one house every other month that is sold. So let's take a little gander at what uh, you can find in the Fairview Edition. The first house I wanna check out is this one right here. This house is gonna give you a great idea of craftsman style reimagined in the more modern take of it. And this is a really great example of a backyard or a house that doesn't really have much of a backyard in this community. Um, almost all of the houses have actually all the houses do have garages in the back of the house which you'll see throughout but this one doesn't even have like a real backyard it has kind of like this side yard thing and then let me scoot back up here and then like this little deck area and gravelly bit so that's what i mean when i say that not all the houses have backyards but i am going to show you one with a backyard so you can get some context real hardwood floors phenomenal Kitchen, ooh, I can't tell what kitchen countertop that is. I'm gonna go with granite because most of the houses in this community have granite countertops, but don't quote me on that for this house because I can't tell from those photos. Ooh, a soaker tub. Everyone needs a soaker tub in their lifetime. All right, this is pretty standard for what you're gonna find in this community. Some of them, the color palette is a little bit more earthy and true craftsman style. This is a little bit more uh, beige in its tones. But the real reason why I wanted to show you this one is because this is a house in this community that has the uh, possibility of dual living or like if you wanted an, um, an apartment to rent out, my lord. Let me catch my breath here, Jesus. Um, this is a great example of 
just dual living potential. So this particular house has 860 extra square feet of uh, dual living potential. So a little kitchenette. You've got your mini split right here, which is that white thing to provide you with AC and heat. And then there are, uh, is the bathroom. And then here is the garage, again, towards the back of the house, which means that for this house, you are going to have alley access. Remember, the entire community of uh, Fairview Edition is really built around this concept of front porches, and then your ugly ass garage can go in the back where nobody needs to see it. All right, so this one was a four bedroom, three and a half bath, and almost 3,000 square feet. So these houses can be deceptively large. Let's check out this one right here. All right, so this one's kind of unique because this is actually two condos. And that is incredibly unique for Morningside. We don't see condos, especially at this level and quality in the Morningside neighborhood often. Um, this one is three beds, two and a half baths, and 1,400 square feet. So that is going to be on the lower square footage for this community. And this was just for one side. Um, this listing was just one side of the condo complex here. So with a condo, you would own everything on the interior of the walls. And this one, I love it because it's just so light and bright. I love these squared tiles. They are so cute. Oh, and the backsplash goes up to the vent there. Love it. Again, like the taste and character of these homes, I think it does a really great job of blending farmhouse meets Pacific Northwest meets um, Craftsman, but like modern take on all of those. This is definitely quartz. Uh, quartz countertop there all right this one let me just show you where it's positioned because this one's kind of unique and looks um over the middle school here which is leslie middle school and so this big old field is part of the middle school but this is where that little condo was located and so it kind of overlooks this hill that slopes pretty steeply down this way all right let's move on to do, 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 do. this one right here Okay, this one I wanted to show you because it has a generous size backyard. But first, let's take a gander. Three beds, two baths, and 2,000 square feet. So this is kind of middle of the road in terms of square footage. And I just love the color palette. I love that like you're not getting just grass lawns because honestly, who plays in the grass in their front yard? I love more of these native plants and kind of steppable areas. I think it looks really good. Um, this one is a little bit funky in that tiling. This might have been a custom house when it was first built because those tiles look like they would be an upgrade. Have you ever tried to install hexagonal um, tiles? If not, you know that there would be an upcharge. I mean, if you have, you would know. <laughs> All right, going through this house, we've got a... You know, I'm really not quite sure what to make of this. This is kind of a confusing layout and I really can't tell from the photos what's going on. But okay, this is really the part that I wanted to show you. Screw the inside. This is a decent size backyard. Actually, this is really good size backyard for this community. They've got grass, they've got ample area to spread out. Great for Fido. So keep that in mind, this is like the bigger side of backyards in this community. And this one is slightly on a hill, um, not too bad. There are a few houses that I would be like, hill, no, that's a big ass hill. I wouldn't live on a hill. Well, maybe I would, I don't know, depends on the house. Anyways, let's continue. Great sitting area. And you'll notice that a lot of the houses, they have like these sitting areas that open up into their kitchen. And I love that just to open up the space and create that open concept. Got a big pantry in this one right there. And this looks like it is granite, but probably a leathered finish, which kind of makes it matted. I think that's a very nice finish for countertops um, and looks like it fits really well in this house. Okay. The last house I need to show you is not on this list because the last time that it sold was five years ago. And it's this beauty right here. 
there are no interior photos, but this is like smack dab on the corner right when you enter this community. It's big and I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, it also has dual living. It is just spectacular. One of my favorite houses in this community, but y'all look at that. <laughs> Almost 4,000 square feet. This is an abnormality for this community. Most houses are not going to be 4,000 square feet, but I think there are two in this community right now that are 4,000 square feet. Okie dokie. Let's go back to here and just check out like what are the other ones that have been sold in the past year. We've got a rendering, which that one is um, completed construction. And then this one actually just recently sold. That one has more of a farmhouse vibe than many of the other houses. And this was a rendering too that just sold. Okay, let's go jump in the car and drive around this community together. We are driving around on the main street into the Fairview edition. So on the right hand side, you are going to see a little anemic park for the kids. Those are what they call pocket parks, AKA just mini parks. And this community, the Fairview complex, once it's all constructed, they are gonna have more um, pocket parks and an amphitheater. Um, there's currently an observatory. They're gonna have a village farm. These are all future amenities, so keep that in mind. But if I were to continue straight ahead, I would be hitting phase five where that new construction of this community is taking place. We are headed down the hill in this community. There are houses that are on a hill, but look at the grade. It's not too bad, especially in comparison to some of the ones we've seen in like West Salem. That white house right here, this is the one that I ended our online um, exploration of homes on that recently sold. But it's kind of cool. You can see the style and the flavor and architecture of these houses. It's starting to evolve and change with time. These houses, you know, the, the closer you get to Pringle Road, which is the entrance of this community, they're much more craftsman-y and then it kind of transitions into more farmhouse style. But it's just so cool because it mixes Pacific Northwest vibes with modern touches really well. Case in point, look at that big ass house with a big old porch, very craftsman-y on that lower half of the first floor there. We're driving up the hill. This is an itty bitty community. So you're gonna, we're like back on the main road again. Um, I love that house right there. It's so cute. But that is on like the top of the hill kind of, um, of this community. So we just went to the bottom, we went to the top. Now we're passing that little anemic pocket park again and we are just headed straight. Now to the left is that maroon house. I love that house. I think it is just so beautiful and mwah, chef's kiss. To the left is my favorite house, which I didn't even capture on video for you guys. But this is like the older part of this community. You can tell that the trees are older. They are more mature and just have more foliage all over. This is also kind of going to be the, in my opinion, the quieter part of this neighborhood just because it's a little bit more removed. You have more foliage to buffer yourself between the train tracks down, um, gosh, I guess it would be to the northwest of where we are driving right now. This just, uh, if you were to continue going straight, you would run into this massive vegetation. You've got oak trees right here. Um, I don't know what that sign was about. I was like, is this a park? It's not a park right there. There must be some walking paths, but I didn't get out and explore too much on foot. So we are just continuing to drive. One thing to note is that your mailman will not be delivering your mail even though you have a cute front porch in this neighborhood because you have centralized mail boxes. I just fucking love the idea of front porches. Like I grew up in a four square house in Portland and I had a big old front porch growing up and I used to love it. Like you just hang out on your porch, you talk with your neighbors. If you're a kid like I was, it's just so much fun. <laughs> okay, to the right there you have alley access, which is, um, basically just saying like, look, your garage is going to be in the back of your house. Ooh, that house right there, that big blue one, that is a dual living 
house. Oh yes, I got it. That house right there on the left, that is my favorite one that I was showing you that was like 4,000 square feet and just massive. Um, yeah, both of those houses, I'm pretty sure that they are like the two biggest houses in the community. Um, so don't expect every house to be that large and robust. Um, again, we're driving down the hill here. If we went straight, we would be running into Leslie Middle School Field, uh, which is the backside of that condo that I was showing you earlier online. So these houses are constructed um, into the hillside, and so they're kind of perched up here. But I just love these little alley accesses. I think that they are really sweet and charming and really foster a great sense of walkability or I guess highlights for pedestrians like you can just peruse through this neighborhood you don't have to worry about cars zooming through I was the creeper who was you know meandering in this neighborhood but you really don't see a lot of people coming into this area unless they live there because there are just no through streets the house on the left here that's very cute um, and I love that green one. I just love all the colors of this community. I feel like it really knocks the idea of like beige everything off of its high horse. And it's like, let's get some fucking color in here. I like it. Straight ahead as we continue down this alley access, we are literally looking at the new construction Lennar homes that are being built in it's Fairview, but think of the area of Legacy Heights. If you don't know where that is, go down to the description. I have a neighborhood map guide and you'll see it on that map guide. But like, look, this guy's literally in his little cat doing his digging and um, I don't know, field clearing. Like, I don't know what they're doing, but thanks guy for proving my point that this is currently actively under construction. And that is the observatory. Um, I couldn't figure out how to get there in my car. I'm pretty sure you can't get there in your car. I think you gotta be on your feet to do that. Um, but that is the observatory that is going to stay and is going to be a highlight of this area. To the left here, this is the road that's going to connect you to uh, Legacy Heights, Pringle Creek, and to the larger Fairview complex. Those houses to the left they remind me a lot of the houses in Astoria, Oregon on the beach. Um, but why I wanted you to see those is because those are, again, on the tippy top of the hill. We've already driven down this road here because, again, guys, this is like only 60, oh, was it 61 or 62 houses in this community? It's tiny. So, yes, I am backtracking. But it was just so nice out. Like, look at those puffy clouds and blue sky. Oh, so nice, so pretty. Oh, there's the little pocket park again. Let's see, what should I say? I don't know, except maybe that, I'm pretty sure we're coming to the end of our tour here. So this is the entrance straight ahead. Thanks for watching, friends. If you enjoyed this video, you are gonna wanna watch this one next. Bye, friends.